Trying to find this life through sin. Welcome, welcome to Creative Collection NYC. Yeah, Let's yeah, see. we here. We catching the vibe. We, you know, we, we bringing the good energy. It's Creative Collection. We got a special guest with us today. Uh huh. We here with Q Life. You know what I'm saying? Peace, peace, peace. What's good? Peace. This is a good session right here because this is something for people that people out here in the streets can relate to. I need, I needed something for the people in the streets to relate to it. So this is, this is perfect. Who else better to do it with than somebody that's really out here, really been out here for a long time doing many things and made a big change in his life. So Q life, I want you to tell them what you've been doing. Tell them what you want right now. Salute. Salute. First, first I want to say, um, Thank God for them allowing allowing us to be here today. You know what I'm saying? Um, I go by the name of Q Life. Um, salute to the whole panel though, right? Um, street guy turned positive. I was in the streets, no moms, no pops. And and I grew up a hard knock life. Queens, Corona Queens, Jamaica Queens. And um Design could tell you a few stories. Design knows a, a lot of a lot about my life too. You know, I was in the streets heavy and I did a couple of things. We're gonna get into that though. But my name is Q Life, man. And now I have a business called PBN Network, where we bring positive vibes to the neighborhoods and communities. Changed my life around, man. You know what I'm saying? It's grind time, no demon time. What up? Amen. So it's, it's called Positive Beats Negative for a reason. We're going to get into these questions. All right, man. So it's, it's grind time, no demon time. You know what I mean? Like, And we understand where y'all coming from, and we get it. We've been there. We all, we all been there. But we just love to see that somebody is... And people are agreeing that it's time for something different because we done we've been there, done that. Especially for people that really, really, really done it and changed and we want to say like, all right, it's it's good because it's examples being set to show you like, yo, it's a lot of other things out here you can do and still be confident with yourself. You can still be confident in yourself without having to embrace straight up negativity. So positive be negative is no disrespect to people that want to be negative, but it's just like that time is up. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully. So what's your advice to people that have been in the streets trying to make a change and want to do something better with themselves? My advice and my question to you is, it's your life, right? You want better for yourself. So you got to do better. If you want better, if you knew better, you do better. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you was in the streets like me, I was in the streets and all I got was six years out of jail, shot at, stabbed, jumped, robbed in front of my old child. You hear me? You want that for your life? Then get that. Keep that then if you want that. And especially when you go to, if you get killed, don't think it's over when you get killed. You're going to hell. You're burning in hellfire. You want that? So this is the advice that I'm giving. It's better out there for you. It's a better life. It's more to it than just, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, I work a nine to five, bro. I work a nine to five. I struggle too, just like everybody else, bro. I'm not Ja Rule, 50 Cent, and Chris Brown right now. I'm Q Life, you know? And, and, and at the end of the day, we all got to struggle. We all got to get through bad times, ups and downs, trials and tribulations. But, you know, you got to be positive. Now, you're not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect at all. You understand what I'm saying? I go through shit. Sometimes I could get violent, but that's because I'm pushed to that. But when it comes to somebody in the streets, a youngin' that I'd rather them go to being positive and trying to do something better with themselves. Go play basketball, go work out, go to school, listen to your mother, listen to your parents, because you know what? You'll sit here and listen to a big homie in the street or a stranger in the street tell you, yo, go pick up this pack, go pick up that gun, that nigga validated you, right? But when your mother tell you, get up and go to the store for her because y'all need food in the house, you giving her an attitude. Nah, that's not the way to go, bro. I'm telling you, your life can end in three seconds. A couple of seconds, you change your whole life. So that's my advice to, to the youngins, man. Straighten up, man. You don't want that life. Because when it's time to go to jail and do them six years, 20 years, 25 years, you either going to tell or if you hold it down, most people don't. There's very few that hold it down. To the ones that hold it down, salute to them. But at the end of the day, you still don't want to be in there for 25 years because you murdered a nigga because of drill music. Or you murdered a nigga because you said that was your block. That shit is whack. All facts. No no cap. No gimmick for me. 
Royalty, what's up, my guy? I see you. Wagwan King, Q Life. I'm happy you're here, bro. I've been waiting for this episode. Facts. Yo, so um, could you um tell the people about your come up in the uh, um, Smack DVD era? Because I don't think these youngins know what's up with Q Life. You feel me? No doubt. It, it was crazy because I just put out a video on Instagram saluting Smack. Um, Facts. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. I've seen did. that. I like he that. definitely did. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. You know, and he, and he commented twice, you know what I'm saying? He, he showed love back, you know what I'm saying? Um, he showed appreciation. To the people that don't know or that do know about Smack DVD, Smack DVD was the era of when you had to be outside with your music, selling your CDs. If you had beef with somebody in the street, you had to go, you had to see them. You couldn't just talk on a record and be on Instagram. We was in the streets, hard body. We were still, we were the, we were the definition of rappers that was really about that life, right? But at the same time, so we don't want to, we want to change that narrative though. See, back then, yeah, people was killing each other. We was fighting, but the most we did, we was fighting, you know what I'm saying? And shit like that. But it's, it doesn't matter if we did it back then or not. It's time to change that. But, um, you know, the era of the Smack DVD was, was, was real, man. It, you had to go see, if you wanted to get your shit to a DJ, it was no Instagram back then. It, it, it was like, it just started after a while, but. It, nobody was hip to that. So we had to go to the radio station. We was going up to Hot 97 with Smack, going to check K slaying them, man. We had to go see them and actually be in a physical. It wasn't, oh, yo, we're going to send you an email, shit and all that. Nah, we wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? We was in the era where when we shoot a video, you know what I'm saying? You know, when people talk that checking, all that checking, we wasn't checking in with nobody. We was check we was already checked in. We was already we we was popping. So we went to any hood. Can't nobody tell me different. If any whoever hears this interview, nobody can't tell me different. Me, Shay Davis, Barnes, OTF, we ain't checking with nobody. We went to any hood we wanted to and we shot a video. And I'm saying that respectfully too. But what I'm saying is you had to be somebody then. You couldn't be like, you got rappers now, these dudes ain't doing you got rappers that ain't doing nothing. And they getting this respect for what? They not even really. But see, it's not about that no more. We trying to change that narrative because it's not about you being gangster to be a rapper. You shouldn't have to be a gangster. You shouldn't have to kill each other. You got to do certain things to come in the game, man. It's you know, you know, and right. people don't understand it. That's why I changed my life around. That's why I didn't want to be. I don't care about being a rapper no more because rappers do nothing right now. You get signed, they put a, a insurance on you, and you dying. Everybody think it's a coincidence that all these rappers are dying. They dying because that's how they make their money off of you when you're dead. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't even want to be a rapper, but. D, that's that's how I came up with Shea Davis, Barnes. We was in the hoods. We was go, we was on the DVD, the same DVDs with Lil Wayne, Fifty Cent, Lil Kim. We was around G Unit. That's 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 just the life that we was living. You understand what I'm saying? And we had a team, and we was rolling. We was rolling. But you know, everybody split. Everybody got older. Certain things started happening. Certain people went to jail. And 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 you know, now we grown and we doing our own thing. And that's that's you know, I've been through things in my life after that that made me want to change my life and design. You are somebody that. I used to go to the studio. I was, I was, I was recording at your studio, bro. When you in the basement, bro, and all my songs was coming out fire. And what did I keep telling you? I said, if I was, when I get big, you're gonna be my road producer. Like you coming with me because it, it wasn't about. It was about the love that you showed. It was about. It wasn't about the quality of the studio. It was the quality of of what you knew how to do. You knew how to press them buttons, bro, and you made me sound like no other. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I've been through. I told some of my stories downstairs in that basement, bro. Huh? That's a fact. We go, we go, we could, we could get into it. You know what I'm saying? We could talk about it. For the record, you know what I'm saying? Q Life done had my back in times where I, where things are tight for me and Roy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just want to put that on record just to make sure it's clear. Like we talking to official. We're not gonna get into details, but right. at the end of the day, I'ma say this. I'ma say this for you and for everybody for the important part of what I'm saying. I'm glad to see that you taking your power, your power, you might not know how serious your power is, but your power is heavy for you to say, you know what, we're in my arena, the street arena and in, in, the, in, the, in the other arenas too, but the street arena was big for you. You saying I'm switching the narrative there. Let's do something different there, y'all. I did this, y'all. Let me All switch right. it and let me take that. And look, listen, we could still be gangster is new now. Let's, let's take this gangster thing and let me show you how to be a man. Like, you taking the narrative and you taking it to... Bro, you don't understand how that's going to impact our children, bro. Right. That's going right. to impact our children's children. It's it's going to show people that you don't have to have this persona to be a man. Because really, everybody wants to be gangster, but it's not about being gangster. Really, everybody just want to be a man. 
Well, that's a good look for the kids, you know, the kids in the in the neighborhood and the in the hood and the they need to see that. They need to see that because they're not seeing that. And you know it's being highly censored. You know what I'm saying? If you are doing something good, they don't want to see that. They want to, they only want to see their favorite rappers and they being paid to do to to show them destruction. So if you see somebody that's telling you, "Look, I come from this." They st- they still here in the street, not all these other rappers left the hood. They not in the hood. They not here in the street with us. We in the street. We here. We're living this every day. Like they're rapping about it, but we we're, we're living it. So to see somebody come out of that and turn they they story into a positive situation, that's that is real commendable. That's real dope. And you don't need nobody to to give you the accolades. I respect that. You know, you get your accolades from God. So I respect that. Yeah, that that's a fact. You know, we we had like you said destruction. We had self destruction. You know, um. I feel like I'm a prime example and I can I can talk to these people. I can I can actually say what I'm saying because I've been through it. It's not like I'm just an OG that ain't been through it and I'm telling you something I don't know. So when the youngins ask me, well, what you know about not having no mother? I ain't had no mother since I was three. What you know about having no father? I ain't have I don't I never met my father. No moms, no pops, right? And the lady that did adopt me that's supposed to be my mom's died while I was in prison. So how about that? Let's talk about that. You see what I'm saying? So why you think I'm That's a great crazy. father. Why do you think I'm a great father? Why do you think I love my kids the way I love my kids? Because I ain't had that. I ain't have that. So that's why I go hard when it comes to children. You understand what I'm saying? We out here, right? You got people that do have mothers and fathers that do not listen to them, that disrespect them, that are spitting their face. You understand what I'm saying? That will bring people in the house. They still living under their parents' house and to bring people in the house, mess the house up and don't clean up. All types of shit. All of that is disrespect. Right? I don't tolerate that. I don't like disrespect, when, especially when it comes to parents and people that you're supposed to respect. So I say that to say this. It ain't just about that. Yeah, there's millions of people that probably got no father, no mother. I had none, none. And the person that adopted me that was supposed to be my mother, she died while I was facing my hard times in prison. You feel me? Huh? Let's talk about it. While I was in prison doing six years, she died. Now I have nobody. I come home from jail, right? Now I'm just now meeting my real family. Because remember, I was young when my moms died. I was three, four years old. I was adopted and moved away from them. So my brothers and sisters and cousins, they all growing up. But I'm in jail growing up. I'm in the streets growing up, not even knowing who they are. But when I come home from jail, I try to start meeting them. And I'm just now getting to know my sisters and brothers. I don't even know what to say to them. So now, everything that I'm doing now in my life now, it goes back to that story. It goes back to that. So we have to think about this. If I feel like that, how do these kids feel now? We can't just tell them, put down a gun. I got to talk to them. You got to get cool with them. Figure something out. They might need a hug because I'm going to tell you the truth. When I was 14, when I was 13, before I went to jail, my first, that was my six years, was my second time in jail. I went to jail when I was 13 years old, went to DFY for a robbery, you heard? So before that happened, I needed a hug, bro. I needed somebody to tell me they was there for me. I needed somebody to tell me they, they love me because the lady that adopted me, she ain't telling me she loved me. She beat me. Every time I got in trouble for something small, she beat me and didn't beat the other kids. So how did I feel? No mother, no father. This lady beating me. She's not really my mother. I'm mad. I'm angry. And I took up the anger on people in school. I hit niggas with hammers. I done did this for talking about my moms till this day. Somebody say, if I'm arguing with somebody and they say your mother, they better run. You understand what I'm saying? Shit like that. That's my mind frame. So, you know, it, it, it all boils down to that. But I try to change that. I try to turn the negative into a positive because... At the end of the day, all of that that I went through, I went through for a reason. And this is the reason now, PBN Network, for me to change the narrative. And show, and show, look, to show that kid, that same kid that's out there, that's me, that's really me right there. That young kid on the block right now, that's me back in the day. right? He don't know that, but that's me. So instead of letting him, you know how people say, well, they got to learn, they ain't going to listen, they got to learn for themselves. Why? That's like telling your son. I got My oldest son is 20, right? That's like telling him, I ain't going to try to teach you the way. I'm going to let you go through it. Nah, I'm going to try to show them the right way first. I'm going to tell them what I went through. But just because daddy went through it, because, you know, you post something on Instagram and motherfucker be like, well, you did it back in the days. Why he can't? What you mean? Why would I want you to go through that? I want to change that. You don't want your child to go through it just because you did it. I did it. Now I made a mistake and I learned from my my mistake. So I got to teach my kids what my father and mother couldn't teach me because they was dead or something. My pops, I don't even know if he's dead. Till this day, he could be alive. I just never met him. I don't know what's going on. But at the end of the day, I didn't have parents to teach me. So I'm going to teach these kids. Don't go through that. Don't go grab that gun just because you, 
you're in the heat of the moment. You mad right now and you're in the heat of the moment and you're about to go do something that's going to change your whole life, though. Mind you, it's going to change the person's life that you're going to murder. It's going to change the family's life. It's going to change your mother and father's life. Everybody loses at the end. Don't get me wrong, though. I get some certain shit that goes down. You know, a nigga murdered my mom's. I understand a, a nigga going to get his gun to murder who murdered his mom's. I understand that. But a lot yeah, of the murders. no question. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the murders that's going on right now is not because of that. The murders that's going on now is because of um, drugs. Females, niggas is killing each other for females, niggas is killing each other for drugs, and niggas is killing yeah. each other for real music. You don't even know this person, and you want to kill them. Oh. Just be cautious. Like, don't, you know, don't do nothing for no reason. You know, if it's a reason, if it's your family, if it's a somebody you love, that's different, but be cautious. Not You're not saying don't defend yourself. You're saying mm-hmm. all of this ignorance. Ignorance, please stop it. We're supposed to love each other. Please stop it. And if it's not necessary, don't do it. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. And, and and I'm also saying, yo, stop, stop, stop hating on each other. Stop, stop hating on each other, man. Like, like you see another person in your culture doing something good for itself, and instead you want to compete against him and take him down. But when the police compete against us or kill us, shoot us, everybody wanna loot. But when a black person kill another black person, nobody's loot. It's not making sense out here no more. Life is not making sense. It's backwards, and we're living in the matrix, and people need to understand. Fuck you, you fuck with PBN network, you're gonna get the real. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I ain't going to tell you. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm not going to bite my tongue. At the end of the day, I understand beef is beef, right? But when, and back in my days, I know I wasn't, I didn't see somebody I had beef with and, and run down on him with the hammer if he was with his kids. I ain't do that. I have respect enough to say, you know what? I'm going to catch you another time. Because my OGs wasn't allowing me to do that anyway. They see me doing, like, like you know, like living the projects, bro. You see an old lady walking up the stairs Back in the days, if you ain't helped that lady, niggas is getting at you. Like, yo, why the fuck you ain't they smacking you in the head or something? Like, yo, what you doing? Why you ain't help her up? Nowadays, they want to pull out their camera and record and say, what are those? And what she got on? And laugh at them. That shit is ignorant, bro. And that's why when, 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 these, when the other people call us ignorant and say all of that, that's what we are. Because we showing them that. But we get mad at them for saying that. We get mad at them for saying the word nigga. But we say it to each other and we kill each other. How can we get mad at you? How we getting mad at them, though? Why are we not getting mad at, ourse- at ourselves? You understand what I'm saying? Facts, bro. Preach. Come on, bro. That's my new name, huh? Yeah, man. New name, preacher, nigga. Because you know why? At the end of the day, it's like, yo, bro, y'all don't see it? Y'all don't see what's going on? Everybody, Everybody's worried about the corny shit that's on Instagram and Facebook, right? Everybody worried about that yeah. while they're passing laws that you don't even know about it. Did you know that they got a law passing soon that they're going to teach gay class in school? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what's it. going on. Now, now, I'm going to say this, though, because I don't want to sound like a like I hate Directly. It. Straight direct. So, let me say something, though, because I don't want to sound like I'm just... But at the end of the day, right is right and wrong is wrong. And all I'm saying is kids shouldn't be taught that, though. If you're a grown person and that's what you are, that's what you are. That's what you are. Okay, cool. But you ain't going to teach no kids that shit. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? That's I'm coming from with it. I don't hate them. I don't hate everybody. You, you are what you are. Don't teach that shit to kids. Let them grow up and want to do that themselves. They're about to teach that shit in school. Well, guess what? When that day comes, none of my kids is gonna be in school or in that class. Disclaimer, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna um jump into, you know, so-called discrimination and like that, but we're gonna make sure we justify that we don't agree with, you know, early education of that, anything wrong, anything wrong to children, whether it's that, gay, though. whether it's guns, whether it's violence, that, whether it's that, the that, wrong right, imagery. Right. Period. Right. Period. Violence. They promoting violence out here in the world, man. And violence is what's getting the views. And people are getting tricked, like, oh, if I do this, then I'm gonna do, yeah, I can get paid for doing that. You know what they they started paying me on Instagram. You know that does design, you know I get paid now on Instagram? I get paid for my reels. But guess what? I'm I'm not gonna say, well, you know what? If I do something negative and crazy, they're gonna pay me a lot. I'm not switching up, bro. I'm gonna keep doing my funny shit and my motivation speaking and get the bread the, the better way, the good way. Because the, at the end of the road, I'm going to win. Watch what I tell you. All these people that's doing all of that negative, crazy shit, they're going to lose. And I'm going to be the winner. Right now, it looks like they winning right now. Right? It looks like they winning. But tell down when, when you really look at what's going on, I'm about to put out a video tomorrow, you heard? And it's about, it's about something like this, right? When God, God sometimes takes people out your life. When God takes that person out your life, we look at it like it's a bad thing because it's somebody we love. And we're like, damn, oh my God, we're feeling bad. Don't feel bad. Embrace that shit. You know why? 
God took that person out of your life for a reason. You heard? Because at the end of the road, when that person leave you leave your life for a long time, your life gets better. It's a reason why that person is not in your life. You know how many people, you, your, your, your design, you know how, you know who I started with with PBN Network, huh? Who I start with? Ain't none bro, of them. It's all love, bro. It's all love, man. I still, I, I know what you've been through, and I, I just want to say, even with what you've been through, it's all love because at the end of the day, they just not where you at, bro. They just not where they just not they just not there yet. Their my their psychological understanding is not where you've been. Their spiritual understanding is not there yet. But they some of them may get there. You know what I'm saying? I'm really just soaking it all in, man. Like this is real talk that the people need to hear. You feel what I'm saying? Like people, like the problem is for me, it's just like it's no rules anymore. Like people ain't got no morals. Like that's a big issue. It's no shame. We need to bring back shame. Back in the days, bro, you did some wild discussion shit. We was talking about it. It was the topic of discussion. You was getting shamed that you was hearing about yourself. Now it's like the wild, wild west. It's really whatever outside. Like it's no rules. There's no morals. Like. You know, niggas is attacking you, shooting you in front of your kids, in front of your wife and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least back in the days when there was problems in the streets, it was rules. Like, yo, no kids, no no, no women, you know what I'm saying? No Sundays, et cetera. Like, now, it's really whatever. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's no rules. That's the problem. Crazy. Right. Squeaky, do you have anything to say before we jump into... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm... Listen, I, I sit back and I watch and... I network with people and making solutions to see, you know, how we can make things more positive. So I have I have family in the industry, outside of the industry, and I just got to get it, get it from both sides. And I just I just got to play it cool, play it safe. And I'm just like I'm I'm disgusted by what this generation is turning to, honestly. But I can only just be grateful. And I thank God for people like you, people like us that is holding it down and just like staying positive throughout all the negative. Like we still remain positive. People don't know how we do it. So just got to salute to y'all. Thank you. Thanks. All praises to the most high. Amen. All right. All right. I want, I'm, I'm Q life. I'm asking this question. I know you know how to answer this question, but this question is you're going to probably think something new, but I'm asking this question for viewers. And for people that listen to you and hear you, how do you deal with people judging the change that you have made? Mm, good question. Good question. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really think nothing of it. You know why? At the end of the day, I don't care what nobody thinks. See, see, back in the days, I would have cared. You know why? Because my pride was in the way, and I was scared back then. And when I say scared, I don't mean scared of a man. I was scared of what people thought. If people seen me go get a job and work at McDonald's, what would they say? That's true life from Smack DVD. It was all about the image. It's not about an image no more. This is real life. This ain't no video game. See what I'm saying? In a video game, somebody could do something or say something about you or somebody could kill you in a video game and you could come back to life. In reality, you can't come back to life, bro. So I don't care what nobody does. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. At the end of the day, well, guess what? And if they do, you know what I'm, you know what I'd say to those people? Well, guess what, son? You need to be doing the same thing, cause your life means something. If your life don't mean nothing to you, then you could look at me and say, "Well, Q, why did you change your life around? Why? I got five kids, and I believe in God. That's why. And I'm tired of. Did you go through it? Did you do six years in prison and had to fight all the time and cut? Huh? Did you, did you sleep in the car with your child before? Huh? Did you have to go to the studio late nights and then worry about where you're going to go sleep at the next morning? Huh? Did you go through that? So why the hell am I worried about what they think? I changed because I want to change because it's my life. You don't worry about what other people think about you, man. Never. Never do that because you're going to waste your time and your energy worrying about what they think. And then when you get locked up and go to jail, ain't none of those dudes that you're thinking about worried about you or writing you. That's why. Preach, tell the truth, bro. Facts. Facts. Yep. All right. Well, you know, sometimes I like to do the uh, resu um, solution resolve. Don't worry about what other people think about you. Do what you got to do for you, your family, your close friends, loved ones. Don't worry about what other people thinking because they got what they thinking is something that's going against your life, going against your lifestyle, going against your character. They trying to, they trying to, 
pin those psychological and spiritual tactics on you to make you do things that's outside of what you really need to do for yourself. It's a trick. It's a trick. So I like that. Let's do it with confidence. You know what I'm saying? Q, before I ask, before I say this one, I want to let you know, you know what I'm saying? I want to get a disclaimer for you. This one is for, again, for the people to make sure that they get uh, the right understanding on we from uh, areas that make you do things that will put you in places that you don't belong in. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm asking this question just to help avoid people do something unnecessarily that will put them in a place they don't need to be in. All right. So what have you learned? What did, what did jail teach you? You don't have to get too interpersonal about your experience, but what did jail teach you to show you like, yo, this... This is something that I don't want to see myself go through again or anybody else go through again. Like, what did Jell show you? First things first, man. Dale taught me that, listen, when you, when you went, like, when I first was in the courtroom and I got sentenced to three to six, it was like, all right, now this is real. I'm like, I'm really going to be away from my family. I'm really going to be away from the streets. So the first thing that Jell taught me was that it's taking you away. It's taking your family away. That's the first thing. You know what I'm saying? Second thing is that it taught me how to be alone. When you're in that jail cell by yourself, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of motherfuckers in jail with you, but you're alone. You're, you're around people that you don't even know. You got to take showers with niggas that you don't even know and get butt naked and all that. Pause. And I don't even have to say pause because I know me. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? But dudes wore drawers and all that and they shit, wash their shit. You know, so at the end of the day, I don't want to get into that. But what I'm saying is you, I learned how to be alone in my cell and know that you forgotten about when you in prison now it's over out of sight out of mind it might be a very few people that might fuck around and you know there was a couple of people that came to see me here and there but once i got into them years i ain't see them no more i was dead to the streets so i learned that the streets don't love you jail makes you know that the streets don't love you see when you was home they, they act like they love you. yeah come on let's go party let's go do this let's go shoot up the block let's go spin the block when you in jail, where those same people is out there having sex with your girl, man. You know what I'm saying? Having fun with your family members, but they ain't writing you. How about that? Think about it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's so much shit in, when you in jail that you could go through. There's some people that have it good. That everybody come see them and they ain't, they ain't going through that. But most people that go to jail, the, them same people they was in the streets with, ain't even doing nothing for them. You think, you think JoJo, you think JoJo writing you? You think that nigga killer? You think killer's writing you? No, killer's out in the streets still doing what he was doing before you left. And he ain't got time to be writing you and doing all that. He's too busy. Remember that. So when you think the streets love you and you get locked up, they're going to be there for you, especially if you got 20, 25 to life. You think they're going to be there? Nah, they're going to, they, they starting a new family and doing something different. They might write you here and there. They might tell your cousin, yo, tell him I said what up. You might have a few real ones that might send you some money. Yeah, that's cool. But ain't nothing like being home, bro, with your family. You don't want to be locked in prison. Mind you, I seen niggas, I seen CEOs kill niggas in prison and the family members is calling up there and they telling them they went to another jail. They call the other jail and Clinton, Clinton tell them, oh, nah, he went to Attica. They call Attica, they, oh, he went over here to Elmira. They killed them and put them under the ground over there, man. I seen it, man. Let's talk about it, man. I've talk been, about it, bro. That's the shit that I niggas met, don't talk about, bro. I met niggas like, in jail. I, I met real niggas in jail. That's where I met Shay Davis at, in jail. Do okay. your friends love you enough for a jail sentence? Probably not. There's very few. Don't get me wrong. Because when I when I went some home, some do, some do. Like me, like me. I'm a real one. I didn't. I, I I got an OG nigga that I left up top. You know what I'm saying? S sending them pictures and writing them. You know what I'm saying? A couple of dollars here and there. Package. You know what I'm saying? I do that. But I'm gonna keep it real with you. After a while, it's like, oh shit, you might forget. You might, you know, you out here in the streets, you running, you ripping and you're running. You living, bro. You living your like, nah. Realistically, I, you living your life. And you can't like, blame. You're not even trying to be funny. You're not even trying to be fake or nothing. You just, you got to take care of your kids. You got to take your your grandma needs something. It's either send Junior something or send your give your grandmother a hundred. Right. You gonna give your grandmother a hundred? It's a fact. just. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate because you know what? Let me tell you this though. Squad. The squad is not loyal. That's where it really messes up. When the yeah. whole squad is not in the greens and everybody is not like, yo, it's 15 of us. Let's make sure we got the homie back. We always going through something exactly. every month for something. And, and then, no, but everybody's not doing that. And it's just you or two people and y'all all. It ain't nobody shouting that shit then. 
all that gang mm. gang hard and all that ain't nobody doing nothing trust me when you got 25 in life all of them shit if it's 20 of them you might you might be lucky to have one or two that still be there a little something but i'm just saying right. Like you said, exactly. when it's a whole squad, when it's a whole squad, nine times out of ten, a whole bunch of the motherfuckers is either telling on you or they're not fucking with you. Come on, bro. We see it. We see it today. We see it even with these rappers. Niggas snitching on each other and all that, bro. This shit ain't this shit ain't no game out here, man. And everybody want to be part of that. These the 13 year old. If you though, listen, if you hear me right now, to this 13 year old, 14 year olds, you 15 year olds, if you hear me right now, 17, 16, it's not worth it. I'm telling you, listen, this is somebody talking that been through it. So I can tell you this. It's not worth it, man. Because when you in the streets, you might have your little blood homies, your crip homies that can help you when you got beef. In jail, ha, you by yourself if you ain't got, if they don't know you like that, it don't matter what you are, nigga, they gonna herb you. I'm telling you that right now. Lucky, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Lucky, I had a name. Lucky, they knew about me because I was wilding in the streets, Right? But if they ain't know about me, niggas would have been, you know I mean, somebody, when I first went to jail, I had to fight. I had to fight. When I first went in jail, I had to fight a couple of times on Rikers Island because some dudes didn't know. And they had to find out the hallway. Like, nah, what? What's up? Let's go. Let's get shaking right now. But you don't want to go through that. You don't want to go through that. There was times where I, I had to take a loss. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just stabbed me. Niggas done, come on, bro. I had to take a loss, but I went all out. I did my thing in jail. They called me Shorty Queens. I was repping Queens to the fullest, but that's not what it's about. While I was repping Queens and fighting in jail, I could have been home with my family making a life for myself. I wasted six years of my life that I could have, you know what I mean? I could have did something else with. And now I'm trying to get that six years back. And I can't. Right. Well, for, for, for all the people out there, you know what I'm saying? I know we got, I mean, like, I've been out here, you know what I'm saying? I've definitely been out here. I've been outside, honestly. Uh, as, as positive as I keep it, I know how people think. And I just want to say, like, when you got somebody with more experience than you, take account for it so you can learn from it. Because this is what the OGs is about. This is what the elders, I want to say elders first. This is what the elders is about. The elders is going to come to us and they're going to tell us what it's about, tell us what's going on. And the OGs is going to come to us next and then tell us what's going on. And we need to learn from it. So we don't end up in predicaments that ruin our lives. Cause I know we so prideful, like not, not even my age group, but younger than me is so prideful. You can't, nobody can't tell them nothing. They're like, man, I'm invincible. And it's just like, bro, you not invincible for that long. After that two years of invincibility, we all went through that two years of invincibility. That shit, that shit is like insurance. It go up. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's on to the next, man. I just want people to learn from... I want people to start learning from our lessons so that way we can stop. I want people to live good. Like, like I want us to learn from what we've seen and just start to live good. Because guess every other culture lives good after they've seen what their uncle went through and their father went through and a grandfather and all that. They live and they like, oh, oh, my uncle had a bad investment. I'm about to make a better one. But we always see, oh, my uncle went to jail and... I'm going to jail too. Like it's like what? How? Why? Where, where's the lesson? Yeah, you know, until they get there and they figure it out. Like, oh shit, this ain't what I thought it was gonna be. Because, 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 <laughs> unk, listen, unk can't listen. Let me tell you something, right? I'm gonna give you. Some, I'm glad you said. It. Let me give you a quick one, right? I when I went to jail and then when I when I went up north, I ran into the first person that I was ran into that I was so surprised. Guess who I ran into? My godfather, big brolic dude that was in the streets. Everybody was scared of him, right? Let me tell you something. And I'm not saying this disrespectfully. I'm saying this respectfully. He was still that dude in jail. But at that time, when I went there, he was trying to come home. So he was on some pre... Like, he was on some shit. Like, I'm on now. He was on some shit. Like, yo, Jay, you know, just be cool in here, man. Because I was young. I was 16. You know what I'm saying? When I went up north, I was 16, 17 and all that. So I was a wild boy. I was wild. I was one of the adolescents that was wild. And so... He was like, calm down, just chill, you know, relax and go home, man. Bro. So I'm like, yo, what's up, man? You about to go home? Like, why you changed on me? I'm, I'm asking him why he changed on me. Like, how you asked me that question? Then I was like on some, I seen some dude, you know, try to like, you know, press him on some shit. Nigga had beef with some dude. And, you know, my godfather was like, yo, chill, we don't want no problem. I said, what? That's my, that's my godfather. What the fuck you mean you don't want no problems? And I, and I went at, I, I took care of that. But he was telling me to chill. And I took care of that. See, that was my time then because I had to. I was already in jail, so I'm not going, you know what I'm saying? But you don't want to, you don't want that. So everybody that think, yeah, it's, 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 
what I'm saying? Like, everybody is not, you know. You get you, tired, bro. You get. wanted to go home. He older. Mind you, he older. So he telling me, chill. He want to go home. He wasn't trying to beef. Now, don't get me wrong. If the dude would have touched him, he would have wild on him. The dude didn't touch him, but he was in his face on some boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? So I backed out my razor. And, you know what I'm saying? Yo, hold on. That's my, that's my, you know what I mean? That's my uncle. That's my godfather. That's my, that's family right there. Nah. He's like, yo, chill. Just go. I, will, uh, I said, listen, I'm not going home no time soon. You going home. You chill. Fall back. Let me take care of this nigga. You feel me? That's how it was. I'm speaking like this now because I'm talking about something in the past, y'all. Positive beats negative, though. But this is just my experience of why I'm positive now. I don't want to go through that no more. I don't want to have to. Nah, it's cool. The next question is going to balance you out, bro. I got you. All right. First off, I want to say, um, you know, it's positive beats negative. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make it clear. It's positive beats negative. We're not asking these questions because of anything else. Because we try, we we also, you know, we 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 want to beat up negativity. <laughs> like we right. tired of seeing people go through things. You know what I'm saying? We tired of seeing negativity. This is just a example of people that have dealt with these issues and st stood up through them and was strong and survived them. But many haven't survived them. Many haven't had the support. Many haven't had the strength. Many haven't had the, the mental to do it. And we just want to say, like, you know, some t some people don't get through it. It, it. And that's just what it is. So um, before I get into this next question, does anybody have anything else to say? We can, we can run it, bro. It's all good. So this is the last question of the night. I hear you talk about God a lot. And, yeah. and I think this is an important part for us all because we want to make sure that we emphasize God. We emphasize your spiritual learning and your growth. What? in your life brought you closer to God and really just, you know what, let me bring it home. Let me, let me come home. What, what, what did that for you? A couple of things, but the main thing that got me really close to God was, um, I think, I, th I kind of think you might know the situation, bro. Like once that started happening to me, it brought me closer to God, bro. You know, the situation that happened, man. You know, when I, when I got a gun in my face in front of my child, bro, I had a gun in face in my, like, this is the things that I used to do, but I'm getting it done to me now. Huh? See how the tables turn? Oh, man. Mm. Uh, this is what I'm trying to tell y'all. I don't got to put this out there, but I'm not going to tell y'all what... Or share, wait, wait, before you keep talking, share what you can share, bro. You know, we don't need, yeah, yeah. No, we don't no, no, need no. everything, I, you know? I, I, I'm not putting no names out there. Nobody got to know what's going on, nothing. But I'm just saying that at the end of the day, this is something that happened to me, bro. Huh? I got done to me what I used to be doing. So I got to, I got to taste. I got to taste what that feel like. And it don't feel right to have your own gun in your face in front of your own child. How about that one? In front of my child. Yeah, where I'm contemplating, I'm itching to, 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 you know, want to really be on some... Because they was like, yo, don't even... Because they knew I was official. They telling me, don't, yo, don't even... So when I go to go try to grab my joint, they whip it out. Like, nah, it's right here. What you doing? What you going for? My heart dropped. Yeah. What? Hold on, like, hold on, hold on. They got my joint. Huh? They got the job. What can I do? But I'm still that wild nigga that's trying to fight a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. But then I had to realize, oh, my boy right here, let me... Because if that gun go off, it can hit him. All right, boom. That's it. I got it. Whatever that situation. Boop, boop, boop. I ain't going to talk no more about everything else after that. But what I'm saying is, after that, I lost Maserati Fox. I lost my brother Born. I lost family members. Come on, bro. I got shot at in on Jamaica Ave, close range. Nigga tried to shoot me in my head and missed. Huh? That's why. God. God was there for me, bro. It wasn't nothing else. What else was it? I can't say it was just me. Like, I'm, I'm Magneto, nigga. Nah, I'm not in con Nah. It wasn't me. That was God saving me. Yeah, yeah you a real team. See, this is what I mean, though, because it's like real. We need... It's not even about like your full experience. We need real people to talk, like right. you know what I'm saying? Because, because yeah, bro, it's so they're much fake going on, right. bro. Right. It's so do much it. fake going on, bro. We we true. need to make sure we ha hear real people speak about their experiences, bro. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared to say. Okay, so you see how motherfuckers is so embracing and so they put so much energy into say what they did do. Yeah, I, I punched niggas in the mouth. I done shot niggas. I, I done did this. I done do that. But nothing ever happened to you? Niggas is scared to talk about the, the shit that happened to you when you felt embarrassed. See, I'm not scared of that. You know why? Because I've been there and did that too, though. 
But you, nobody, listen, there's a time for everybody where that comes to an end, bro. Tupac was a gangster, but he cried before. He got shot. It can happen to you too. Stop acting like you fucking immortal. Everybody want to act like they the super gangster, but niggas is getting killed. That super gangster that's doing drill music right now saying, yeah, I did it. I shot son and such on the ad. I did, I, did, I, did all, I did all of that, right? He gets shot the next week. So stop acting like it can't happen to you too. And that's what I had to realize. Yo, Q, it ain't, you ain't the only one out here wilding out. But you got kids now. Do I want to run up in a nigga crib ever, ever? Nah, that ain't my lifestyle no more, bro. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that no more. I've been there and done that. So it's not about scared or being scared. Some people may say, oh, so you say you changed because you were scared? No, nigga, if I was scared, when, I was, when, when, they, when they had that gun in my face, I was still talking shit and trying to fight them niggas, nigga. If I was scared, I wasn't scared. But I'm going to tell you this, though. Now what I am scared of is leaving my kids out here alone. So if I don't want to do that, I need to get out that life. I no longer live that lifestyle no more because I've been through it. I've been through the bad and the good. I was the one doing this. I was the one doing that. I was the one wilding. And then I got wild on, nigga. And then after that, I seen my people's dying. I ain't want to be next. I got kids out here now. I ain't want to be next. You kidding me? You shitting me? That's what you mean to tell me? Y'all niggas want to die? You want to die. You, you 15 years old doing drill music talking about boom, 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 boom. So you want to die. You just seen three of your drill rap niggas die. And that's, you know you next. You know they coming for you. And you still want to be. So that means you want to die. Some people just want that life. I can't. Some people, they, it's already too late for them. They gone. I understand all that. First off, to like, like dr drill music is just like, it's way more than a little bit of drill rappers dying. Like it's it's a lot. It's, it's not going to be a couple. It's, it's it's they that that shit is just going crazy. Going crazy. But, but for people to try to put the put the um stereotype of scared on you, people will try to put the stereotype of scared on me. They they no, try to do that. I'm not saying Bro. people did that, but I know that there's probably some people out there that might hear me say what I just said and say, oh so. Oh, so because it happened to him, now he ain't, he got scared. No, I didn't get scared. I wasn't scared of no man. I started being scared of me leaving this world and I got kids out here. I started being scared for those people. I, started I got being you, bro. I got those you, people too, to what could happen to them. Bro, we not, it's not, no. that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not about being scared. It's about knowing your level of like life. Like, you know, like it's, it gets to a point where you know your level of life, like, Right, exactly. You know what level you on, and certain levels, certain levels. Let me let me explain this quickly, briefly. Certain levels of people are reckless with their life, and they think that's regular. I'm not right. reckless with my life. I will watch you be reckless to the side, bro. Like I'm not gonna be reckless with you. I'm gonna watch you put yourself in endangerment for no reason. Like I'm 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 not just because I'm not scared of something doesn't mean i'm gonna put myself in danger every day like we all been through things we from bro in queens is if you if you go outside in queen like one thing y'all gotta realize if we go outside in queens it's scary for everybody if you go outside and you really move around a little bit and do anything it's scary but it's Yo, a I'm difference from being stupid it's a difference yeah. of being stupid let me ask you a question if you with your wife and your kids right and it's nighttime and your wife be like oh let's stop at the store you with your kids now, and you know this store right there. Let's just let's just say somewhere in Queens on the South Side. You know this store right here. A whole bunch of shootings, murders, and robberies be going down. Right? You gonna stop at that store with your kids and your wife at, at late night, bro? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Yeah, bro. You 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 said you already. I don't even like if you say I'm gonna go to a certain store on South Side anytime. I'm not. I'm probably not gonna go. Why? Right. Not because I'm, I'm scared to. I'm, I'm I just, just know it. that going to that store at night at 12 a.m. and all that, I already no, know what I'm goes not. on. So I'm gonna go to another store. I'm not yeah, scared. I'm I just know my kid and my family gonna be safer somewhere else. Right, but it's I'm not, not saying like that's the problem with pride. Pride make you stupid. Right, but I, I'm not even saying it. I'm just saying I'm a little different. I might go to that store if I'm by myself because I know people and I know this and that. But what I'm saying is to the average person that knows that's not really like that. 
when you with your family, though. Forget being by yourself now, because we're not talking about self. We got to stop thinking about ourselves. We got to think about the people around us. So when you with your kids and your wife, yeah, yeah, I'm scared that something might happen to my kids. I ain't scared of the niggas. I'm just scared of what can happen to my kids or my wife. I got a family that I got to take care of and protect. So why is the question, why would you stop at that store? Huh? See, we got to start thinking. When you're a grown man, you think better. When People you, are just, it's pride. It's the pride. pride. Oh, what? I ain't scared of this shit. Okay, boom. Now, now you go. It's not just about you being scared. You got your kids here, three-year-old, six-year-old. They don't know nothing about being scared or shots or gun. They don't know nothing about that. Why are you putting them in that predicament? Daddy, I want to come too. You bringing them outside trying to act like you. Nah, nah. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. First of all, they shouldn't even be out at that time with us. And if they are, like I said, we're going to get home. We want to make it home. So we're going to go to the store by the crib in the suburbs where we live at now. That's what we're going to do. You understand? And that's the things about decision making and pride. The only reason why I'm saying this is because you said pride. Niggas got to get rid of their pride. See, my pride ain't in the way right now. This interview could go across the world one day. I don't care if nobody hear me say I, I changed my life because of certain shit. You damn motherfucking right. You damn right. You think Maserati Fox was ready to die that day? You think he wanted to die? And he was one of the gangsterous niggas in Queens. Because I know bro, that. That was, that, was two, how, that was two blocks away from my block. Nigga, just... I know that, bro. You think <laughs> I was, you know I know what's up. That was my homie. All right, that, that was the homie. And nah, I ain't even gonna lie. Like you, you know what's crazy part is like y'all put me on. Like y'all, like I was, I was watching Maserati Fox before y'all, but y'all gotta realize y'all power. Y'all put me on to to him like again for real. They make me watch him and check and see what's going on with him. And when he, so when he, so when he passed, all right, like rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? I felt it the same way y'all felt it because at that point I was tapped in with y'all. You know, what I'm you know, I, you, you know how I felt about that. I wrote a song about it, bro. Nah, that. You know, that, that I was there. I was around my Maserati Fox. I got a video with Maserati Fox. That's my homie. R.I.P. I was around. I know what's going on. There was people that used to come to me. Let me tell you something, man. People used to come to me and be like, yo, it's cute. Yo, you fuck with Mozzie? Yeah. Yo, watch out. I'm a real one. What you mean? Watch out, man. That's not he. If, if you listen, whatever he got going on with you, that's with you. You know, I think people just try so hard to implement fear into people's life. You know, and one solution I want to tell the people is don't let, do not let other people implement fear into your life. I don't care who they are. Do not just let them put fear onto you. Make sure you stand on what you're standing on and you're not worried about too much fear because that that fear will take a hold of you and just make you a different person and slow your process down. Always keep your process going. Be safe, but always keep your process going. These people will try to put that energy on, bro. And I don't like when they do that because you, you, you and him were two different people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't have too much to do with each other as far as like personal ties. So why are they trying to put fear on you? You know what I'm saying? But it's that's what people, that's what we do out here. As soon as you next to somebody, all right, he's next to him. All right, next, let me let me tie the tie him up with that. I just don't like that. I don't like that. All right, Rosie, Squeaky, y'all there? Yeah, I'm here, gang. You know what I'm saying? I'm just soaking up game. You feel what I'm saying? We wrapping up here, you know what I'm saying? So, um, Squeaky, Royalty, do y'all have anything to say? You know, like, we just in the era where, you know, after you being positive, they're just going to try to make it a negative thing like any way they can, you know. Perception, perception is king, you know what I'm saying? So people are going to paint their own narratives like, oh, he not bothered no more. Oh, he's soft. Like, nah, he's moving smart. You feel what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like, you in the streets, it's only two two things that's going to happen eventually. You're going to end up in jail or you're going to die. At the end of the day, we've seen the story a million fucking times already how many times niggas are gonna learn bro like the toughest niggas get it bro like it don't matter if you tough or not bro the streets don't love nobody bro like if like a nigga got your number he got the drop on you bro you done like it can happen to anybody bro soft nigga gangster nigga medium nigga it don't matter bro like so let's like stop acting like we invincible my nigga anybody can get it bro 
okay, we everybody got an ego, everybody got pride. That's cool, bro. But it's like it's not about that, bro. It's not about poking your chest out, bro. It's easy to destroy. Anybody could do that. Kids in Africa, ten years old, body a nigga, bro. It's easy to destroy. It's hard yeah. to build. Why don't you work? Why don't niggas worry about retiring their moms? Let's take care of our, our woman first. Like, how about we do that? Let's do the man thing, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, let, let's have a real challenge. Let's have a man challenge. You know what I'm saying? What's your, your credit score like, bro? Like, what's your lifestyle like? You raising your kids, bro? Like, niggas is outside acting tough in the, in the street, bro, not even taking care of their fucking kids, bro. Their moms are still struggling, bro. You on the street tricking on hoes. You a fucking clown, bro. Like, let's really talk about it, bro. Like, niggas need to get their fucking priorities straight, bro. That's the problem out here, bro. Niggas is worried about the wrong thing. Who tough? Who fucking who? Who got on the drip? Who driving what, bro? Worry about your family, bro. It's all about bloodline, bro. Everybody, every other race get it, but us. It's about blood, bloodline. It's about family and who take who 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 down with you, bro. It's about loyalty and respect. That's that's the real goal, bro. All this fucking fashion and your who fucking who, like none of that shit really matter, bro. Like it's about God. You know what I'm saying? Raising your family. You know what I'm saying? Like and good vibes. You know what I'm saying? Positivity, bro. All that negative shit, like. Bro, we already seen this movie a million times, like I said, bro. How many times are we going like Street Saint Say? Respectfully. For a fact. All right, well, I appreciate what you said, Royalty. I think you just went in and um I, I know he got a lot more to say, but <laughs> <laughs> I know, bro. I know. It's all right. I know. Um, so we gonna we're gonna wrap it up. You know, it's about that time on the mark. So I want to say, you know what I'm saying? This is, you know, creative collection. Positive beats negative. Q life. Collaboration. PBN Network collaboration. We're going to do more of these. You know what I'm saying? Real niggas yeah. type in. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is, this is great. This is great. You know, good energy. energy. Good lessons. You know, it's going to be a great... It's going to be a great thing for having this type of... Uh, just you know, everybody coming together on this on this level and this frequency is just is wonderful. So, so um, everything's good. We good here. Let me close it out like this, right? I love all my people. You know what I'm saying? I want to shout out to everybody that I love. You know, all my family members that 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 show love and support. You know who you are. You know what I'm saying? All my kids, my lady, everybody. I want to shout out everybody that's 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 supportive. You know, keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? The world need peace. We need peace and love and happiness, man, at the end of the day. You know, nobody's perfect, though. We're going to get mad. We're going to argue. We're going to do this and that. But it's, it's about what happens at the end of the day, at the end of the road. You heard? The end of the road is that we're coming together. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the world needs. That's what our culture needs. We need to come together to fight these bad spirits, man. So we out. AP, AP. Instagram, QLife underscore PBN. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Facebook. I'm on anything. I'll have me. Love. All right. So I just want to say this. This squeaky gems. Uh-huh. Make sure you get your nice herbs. Yes, Make sir. sure you get healthy. Make sure you get healthy. Make sure you work out. Make sh- right. Make sure you exercise. Stretch. I just meditated two days ago, and I feel I, bro, I feel so good from that meditation today. So try these things out, like just just you know positive energy, man. Any positive energy, we bringing that forth. All right, so we closing out. Closing out. Peace. Sometimes you just gotta accept the change and embrace your growing pains. Take this walk with me. Design. My growth pains turned to a paradigm shift I had to take a break from rap They wasn't hearing my gift My Lord Zeus, I can't keep fearing these tricks They call me good rebel Cause I don't follow these scripts I confuse them like Salo Sob Take you on a trip I could beat the myths Passion came and went like a weather change I guess that's ironic Cause I'm about to make it rain I bring that substance I help you function I had to find God My heart lost a lot of loving I feel my soul numbing But I know my time coming Shock them like thunderbolts Yeah, they know my flow stunning good fight I'm in the